today is a very weird day because my cell phone provider has been down all day so I have had no internet and no cell reception for the entire day but I literally could not care less because instead I've been driving this 2011 Mercedes SLS Gullwing and holy crap what a car. I don't even have to say much about the car itself I mean just look at the way it's standing right here with the sunlight kind of on it oh my god this is one of the best looking cars I've ever seen this thing is just you know one of a kind nothing made like it before nothing after it such a cool car let me show you around it so yeah 2011 Mercedes SLS Gullwing as we know this car is a heritage of the Mercedes 300 SL that had the same Gullwing doors and some similar design with the long hood short back so they recreated it for the 2000s with a gigantic V8 engine 6.3 563 horsepower which is actually strategically one horsepower more than a Ferrari 458 so this is kind of the ultimate grand tour from Mercedes gigantic long hood you get a decent trunk in the back and a very spacious interior very wide not so much for the length to be honest but very very wide you could definitely do a good road trip in it just a very very nice interior it is starting to look a little bit outdated but it still looks very very good now the SLS's came in two variations one was the Roadster which honestly kind of looked like a beefed up SL had regular doors just convertible version which honestly very cool to drive with the open top but if you're buying this car you got to go for the Gullwing you got to go for those doors that's the iconic part about this car I think the Gullwings are worth a significant amount more than the Roadsters I think they might even be a lot more rare it just it looks so good the line is so much better on the car and come on you got to get those doors so we're gonna spend the next few days driving this SLS and honestly if there was ever any SLS to test out this would be the one because this one only has about right now 3,800 kilometers for a 2011 car that's pretty insane so if we've ever had the chance to test an original clean SLS this would be it so yeah let's see definitely I'm going to take this downtown a lot it's a cool downtown cruiser a proper supercar a big change from the Porsches I've been driving recently even though next weekend we'll probably have another Porsche but I really, really want to try this out. I've driven a Roadster before, but I really want to see what it's like living with the coupe. Hey guys, we're in the 2011 Mercedes SLS Gullwing. This car is very, very, very different than anything we've been driving recently on the channel, any of the Porsches. This is not, you know, your track focused, very nimble type of car. This is like, the ultimate grand tour this is a gigantic car with a huge hood and it's you know it's definitely built for more highway driving just built to go autobahn speeds for very long periods of time very comfortably it it feels like like a mix between a muscle car and a supercar because you're getting that low very like kind of like hunker down stance and like seating position of a supercar but the way the power delivery is is very similar to you know like muscle cars obviously the engine's right in front of you and it's just like a ton of torque not the easiest power to put down on the ground it's kind of it's it's a car that's definitely meant for you to already be going highway speeds it's not a zero to 60 car it's definitely not a track car i mean back in the day if you guys watched top gear obviously you saw the tires getting destroyed it the car just wants to go sideways it's not a car to go around corners really but it is like such a cool car for that era the era of the big engines before the turbochargers before all that this is you know mercedes is huge naturally aspirated v8 563 horsepower and you really feel that a ton of torque i don't remember the exact figures but just a ton of torque and all you feel is torque 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 the car sounds good at almost like any rpm it like you really hear that v8 rumble here let's go let's see didn't really push it there like you still you hear it you don't need to be going crazy fast or to do stupid stuff to kind of have fun with this car this car just feels so special so like so different so aggressive no matter how you drive it and even though once the doors are closed you're inside you, you would think it'll be like a regular coupe but you can kind of tell the shape of it it's not a regular car you sit so far back in the car that like to be honest even though it is technically front engine but it's also technically mid-engine because I believe the engine's fully behind the front wheels. So technically it's still in the middle of the car and you're just sitting in the very, very back of it. So the entire car is just in front of you. We 
which you know you don't get that on many other cars maybe like dodge vipers and stuff but really not a lot of other cars and man like this is just so cool to all like again my biggest complaint with this car because again it's not a performance car to cut down track times and all that but my biggest 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 complaint with the car is the transmission is honestly so slow like i'm going to change it to manual right now so let's see let's downshift okay so fifth like i pressed it, it, there's a second delay between when i'm pressing the paddle shift and when it goes which you know for transmission like this for a dual clutch you'd think it'd be a lot quicker I, i've been driving these pdk porsches recently and they're like by the time you press it it's already changed gears it's insanely responsive that it's fun to use i honestly i don't enjoy using the paddle shifters in this car because it's like it's so slow it's so sluggish that i usually i'll honestly most of the time i've been driving i've been driving in comfort just kind of cruising around i think this car is a great cruiser but even when i wanted to push it a little bit leave it on sport or sport plus just let the car do it i don't want to deal with it and then get frustrated when i down it and nothing happens really so I'm just letting the car kind of do it on its own. But man, this car. A lot of times with cars like these, especially it's like, you know, the AMG stuff, front engine, you're not sure if it's gonna feel like, you know, a Mercedes or just stuff with a lot of power in it, or if it's gonna really feel as special as a supercar, because you do get some of the like regular Mercedes interior features and all that in the car. But this really feels like a supercar when you drive it. It feels gigantic. It feels like a big deal. Like I think like the best way to describe this car is it's like a big deal. It just feels like you're not in an everyday car. Everything here just like it looks very normal, but it doesn't feel normal. The steering wheel, I like just, I don't know what it is about. I think it's a like flat bottom or anything. It just you know you're not in a regular, you know, SL or anything like that. Um, obviously the doors, like the way the mirrors are, everything is just structured in a way where you know you're in something very, very special. I've been absolutely loving driving this car. It's so cool. It just feels like an occasion. It doesn't feel like something like an SL where you can really daily drive it. I feel like it feels too heavy and too like, just too much to daily drive. Uh, a big thing I noticed with this gearbox is that you kind of press the gas. The first little bit where it, 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 like nothing really happens. You gotta, to get it to actually go in either drive or reverse, you gotta press the gas quite a bit. So the first little bit of throttle response is really nothing there then you suddenly get all the power. It's like here I'm pressing nothing really, but now it's going to like press it all the way. So it's a lot of like, it's almost like an on and off for the power switch pretty much. Um, I've driven a Roadster before with carbon ceramic brakes and that was freaking insane stopping power, the craziest stopping power I've ever felt in a car. This has a regular steel brakes, but even that is very good. It like stops on a dime. And I, again, I could, I don't know if over time they don't age that well or something, but this one is like as mint, as fresh as you can get them. This is 3,800 kilometers. So you know, this car has been doing 300 kilometers a year pretty much for its entire life. So it's as fresh as they can be. So it, it literally looks like a new car. There's plastic on the on the floors here. Like it's still like wrapped up a little bit like, like how it was for factory. It's, it's so good, this car. And, like when you get that torque that like you really i haven't been getting that feeling in any of these porsches that i've been driving but this is just this is a proper muscle car proper supercar it's something very special obviously they don't make this anymore yeah the amg gts the gtrs all that's great but it's not this you, you know the turbocharged and all that it's it feels like a way smaller car like less of a big deal like more of a sports car than a supercar this is like a really special car so the one thing about this car that it's technically like a bad thing but honestly i like it because i like supercars and i like cars that aren't as easy to live with is when you're in tight spaces and parking lots all that because the front is so long and even when you look out at the front it looks long but it even dips and goes even more so the front is insanely long so you always got to watch out for that but also the car is so freaking wide like i've so usually i set up the camera honestly almost to the other side of the windshield and i can like reach it easily and do that this is by far the furthest i've ever set up the camera and it's pretty much still like in the middle of the car. There's so much room. Like there's no way like I could reach the passenger door or anything. It's like probably, I don't know if it's wider than the Lamborghini Aventador, but the interior definitely feels like it. And I like that because it makes it seem like the car needs to be in big open roads going fast. It's not a car that you're gonna buy to drive like in a tight city in tight spaces to park and show off, even though with the doors, it's kind of what it is. Um, 
And the other thing is, I haven't driven on the highway so much yet. Tomorrow we'll do more highway runs and I'll, you know, drive it a little bit faster. I let you guys what I, let, let you guys know what I think about that. But on the highway, this thing just carries speeds so comfortably you don't even feel it so when i picked it up i went on the highway for a little bit you know i thought i'm cruising regular speeds and i'm going like 160 170 kilometers an hour and i thought i'm going like 120 you just do not feel it in this car this car was literally made i think to just go 300 all day long it's and again about kilometers an hour for american viewers but like it just you don't feel the speed this thing just wants to cruise comfortably at insanely high speeds quietly you could do crazy road trips in this. You'll never get tired. You have a good trunk. Like this is a proper, proper, proper grand tour. As comfortable as they get, as spacious as they get. You are like, it's a 2011, so you don't have like Bluetooth audio and stuff like that. But you know, I like you buy an FM thing and you can just use your phone with that. So, but back in the day, this was you know same technology you get in a regular Mercedes, but you get the crazy power and the crazy performance of this car and you just get a very special feeling car. There's a reason this car was significantly more than an SL63 even though it used the same engine is because it's so much more car. It's a ton of car. I, like, I don't even know like how to describe it, but it just, it's so good. So like tomorrow I'll do some highway runs and we really will push it and I'll let you know what I think about it there. But so far from what I've been driving it, I've been absolutely loving it. It feels like a special occasion. You know, sometimes these Porsches get very easy and very like comfortable to drive. This isn't like it's it's a little heavier. You can really feel the size, and again, it just makes it like a special occasion. It's not a daily driver. It is another Sunday morning, and we are in another supercar. Every weekend, I'm, recently I've been driving something crazy, and this is like completely different than any of the other ones. Here, let's see, we're on the highway. This thing has so much power. RPM is sitting super low and the speed is not that slow. It just, it wants to go fast. It's a lot more comfortable going fast than it is going regular speeds. And it's it's not, you know, if, when you're not on the gas, it's not, too, it's not too loud. You can have a conversation here, no problem. But when you press it a little bit, you hear that rumble from the V8. It sounds so freaking good. Man, I love this car. And the cool thing is recently, I feel like I've been driving a lot of similar types of cars, all the Porsches and stuff. So yeah, they're all different from each other, but you know, like they they feel they're almost meant to do the same thing. This is a different car. This is not a car that, you know, like I was saying, it's not a track car. It's a car that you just feel really cool when you're driving it. It's, it's a big deal car. And I love it like for us, you know, like with a Porsche, you probably want to go up north to the like country roads and stuff. This, I just want to hit up major highways, you know, watch the thing just carry speed, then go downtown, drive this thing around. It just feels so badass. It's like it feels like a Batmobile with a gigantic hood. It's just so freaking cool. Like this car is like biggest thing I think is the cool factor of it. And it's not even overly flashy where you're like trying to show off because it does have a bit of the like if you know you know factor to it. Because a regular person that sees this that's not in the cars, you know, they're gonna look at it, they're gonna be like, oh, this is, like looks really cool, but they have no idea what it is. They're not gonna be like, oh, it's a Lambo or Ferrari. So it's it's kind of like you still feel like you're like a genuine car guy when you drive this because this is the type of car that you really need to know kind of you're not gonna go buy it for no reason if you're not into cars but it still has that really cool almost show-off factor that you get with like a Lambo or a Ferrari but this is kind of doing it in a more classy way so the one thing I notice about this car which just makes it really cool for like a grand tour and stuff you get a lot of like you get that almost like luxury feel for it or not even necessarily luxury just a really high quality feel is a lot of these brands like Mercedes Audi when they make a high end car they just kind of reuse the materials they use for the regular cars and yeah even though those companies do make decent like materials for their interiors and stuff sometimes there's still some plastic and stuff on the interior this like I really just started noticing the whole dash is leather like completely the roof everything is Alcantara everything here is leather there is like it feels like they didn't cheap out at all with anything on this interior I think this is probably better materials with interior than like an SL or something like that. It's really cool that they actually put the effort into it because once you sit here, 
you know, you think you'd feel like you're just in a regular Mercedes cabin, but again, like something like this, the Alcantara roof and stuff really makes it feel like you're in a higher quality car. Just the car feels very solid, it feels very well made. Like, I don't know, it just, it feels like a very, very solid car, which is nice because a lot of these like Italian cars, when they age and stuff, everything starts feeling a little cheap and flimsy and you're just kind of too scared to touch it. This 10 years later still feels like a solid car. I don't think it would ever, like, any of the materials would ever give up on the car. I don't know, mechanically, it might not be as reliable, but the car itself is just built so solid. Everything here, I think, is going to hold up for a long, long time. So, the one thing with this car is kind of weird. So, obviously, here you have your modes, like the Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and Manual. I've honestly been driving it in nothing but normal, just because... When you put it in sport and stuff, it's a little too like jerky. I don't know, like the car just, I don't know, it's really weird. Like it can't keep like a consistent speed when you're like in the sport modes. And honestly, the gearbox like is garbage. I'm not like, I'm not, I can't sugarcoat it. It's, it's horrible. And honestly, even like the paddle shifters aren't satisfying to press. Like nothing about this gearbox is good. It's so slow. So I've been just like, I'm just driving in a comfort, even on the highway, whatever. Like I got to put a little bit more gas into it. But I've been just driving in a Comfort. It's a lot better, a lot smoother, and it's very nice to drive in Comfort. Just any other modes is a little too jerky. But yeah, overall, the interior is really, really nice, really comfortable. As you can tell, this car is still pretty much new. It's still got the plastic on the floors, like the leather, everything looks so mint. And it's actually like, it's not a bad car to be driving like downtown like this, but you've got to keep it in Comfort. So honestly, for me, it's really cool the fact that I've been driving this for the last few days. I've driven the Roadster before, but the Gullwing is kind of, you know, the iconic car, especially in this spec. And this is a car that kind of came out around the time that I was like really, really, really getting into cars because, you know, I'm 23 now. So I was about 11 or 12, I guess, when this came out, uh, maybe a little more. But it's really cool to drive it. And this thing really lives up to the expectation of like a crazy feeling supercar. It's definitely as exciting and as different to drive as you'd expect it to be. It does not drive like a regular Mercedes. And it's kind of cool. It's not like a don't meet your heroes type of case. I'm really, really happy with this. And like, it looks so freaking good. I think it's the last of an era with a huge V8. And like, they, they, they definitely did not cheap out on this car. And I feel like now we're in an era, I don't want to say where people, are, like companies are cheaping out on cars, but I don't think they're making cars that are as well built and can last and age as well as something like this will. So this is definitely a last of an era type of car. It's going to age very well. I know right now, so this is a 3,800 kilometer car. In Canadian dollars, this thing's worth probably about 350 to 400,000. And, you know, six years ago, you could get them for probably 120. And I think these things are going to keep going up especially when this car is i heard this car to a 300 sl which were forever million dollar cars i was starting to climb up a little bit more to like around two million and obviously that's a good looking car just a good looking car just a really good kind of heritage car which a lot of times companies when they try to kind of make a heritage car to something they actually don't do that good of a job i think they did a great job with this kind of portraying the essence of the 300 sl when it came out but man this car looks so freaking good in every scenario put it in like I can't believe it with the doors up, doors down, the lines are so good, just proportions are just so good on this car and especially in this color, it's so awesome. So yeah, let's get back in the car, let's keep driving. Uh, we got a nice Sunday and great weather and an SLS going, so let's go drive. Okay, so as much as I don't like all the sport modes and stuff on this car, I pressed the AMG button, which I guess kind of mixes it up and puts the car in the way it should be. I'm gonna go on like slightly twisty roads. Some of them are very narrow, which for this car it might be a little tough because it's very wide. But let's we'll see how it does. So this is the same route I've been taking all the GT3s and all that on. This is definitely not the same type of car. So let's see if we can handle it just as well. Like see, I press the I press the shifter. My hands are already off the shifter, and then it switches. Like it's so delayed which kind of sucks the rest of the car is just so good and it's so much fun the one thing it like as much as a car like needs to be good and you want the shift sometimes like it does also add character to the car when something is not perfect with the car usually the greatest cars things that people kind of remember later on in history aren't cars that were perfect when they came out the cars that have character and this is more like that but it just it is kind of annoying when you know you're trying to drive pretty aggressively and you press the paddle shifter and you gotta wait for it quite a bit to change gears. Like this this car should have a way better gearbox than what it does. 
tunnel. Let's see if we can make some noise here. Pretty good. Okay, now we're getting to a very narrow part. Narrow and twisty, uphill, can't really see anything. But this car is definitely not ideal. But let me see, there's a guy in front of me so I can't go too fast, but like, I'm just constantly worried about how wide the car is in a narrow lane. So I'm kind of watching, making sure I'm not getting too close to the wall, making sure I'm not going, kind of sticking out to oncoming traffic. Like this car is definitely more of a highway car than a twisty road type of car. It's a little too big and too just, too much of a muscle car for like a twisty road. But again, it does add character. It just obviously, that's just not the purpose of the car. If you were looking for that, you should go buy a Porsche GT car. This is just, I think cool, like downtown, like a bit of a show off car, but also a great just highway cruiser, just devour miles. Okay, quick stop for the viewer, leaping in the SLS, there's a LaFerrari right there in front of this S7. Sorry if I'm shaky, but I'm like, I'm freaking out. Freaking LaFerrari, what? Oh my God, random LaFerrari, what the fuck? Like super random LaFerrari. What the hell? So, just like every other video now, we have Zach driving the SLS. Let's see what he thinks. Okay, Zach, so far you've driven in about 20 minutes? Yeah. What do you think? It's a really interesting car, dude. I drove it in Comfort, though, initially. Now we're in Sport Plus, and I feel like it drives a lot better. Because initially, the uh, like the throttle was like really delayed. Yeah. And there's like a lot of give on the throttle and the brakes. The brakes were like, you'd have nothing in the first 15%, and then they'd grab. So kind of weird. Um, See, it's weird because I actually like the Comfort more. Yeah, than the you were saying class. you like Comfort more, which is odd. Uh, but it drives, it, it drives all right now, I, I think, like when the throttle's a bit more linear. Um, but weird car. Like cool. Like the, the design is like really cool and everything is, it feels like a special car, but it's just like, it's so wide. It's so floaty. You're like sitting on the rear wheels. Yeah, there's like very so, bumpy. You there's feel like, like so much of the car in front of you, and it's such a weird car. It's uh, I can't really compare it to really anything else. It's just like a weirdly proportioned car, but yeah. it's cool. Yeah, and I, I was saying it's kind of weird because you'd expect a car like this to kind of be like almost like a beefed up SL, but it's like nothing like that. Uh, like what do you mean? Like just like, like, like uh, you think it because the same engine and everything is an SL. You'd think it would just be kind of that, but like more. Yeah, but it's it's not that. It's its, it's own thing. Yeah, completely its own thing. Yeah, I've never driven like an SL, like a standard SL. I have. It's not like yeah, it's it's, not even... it, it drives like a normal car. Yeah, no, it's it's really cool. Uh, well, this car, it's extremely wide. It's funny you were saying like the space between us is yeah, so we're far. like really really far apart. It's 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 like wider than like, I don't know. My most hands cars. like fully extended right now, and I'm not even like close <laughs> to touching the steering wheel. <laughs> so it's unique that way. I don't know. I I like it. I don't really know SL, SLS is that well, you know what I mean? Like I know like the Black Series and um, you know, I know it's good and rare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I don't really know the cars that well from like a mechanical standpoint either. Yeah. I know this engine pretty well, but you were saying it might not be the same 6.3. I, well, I don't like know, I don't know exactly lineup. the whole, I know it's like, like some cars will have, it's not actually a 6.3, some is a 6.2, but then some is a 6.3, so I don't know what this is. Okay. It literally just says 6.3 on the side, so I hope it is a 6.3. Yeah. But like I've I'm already like, had people comment on my TikTok saying it's a 6.2, so I don't, I don't, oh, really, I don't know really. this Oh, really, really. You've been corrected. I've been corrected. Um, yeah, like I've, you know, I've driven a C63, and I like those a lot. Um, uh, the Black Series, uh, those cars feel really good. But this feels like completely unique. Like the steering is kind of classic. I don't know if you have that feeling with Mercedes. Like if you've driven like, I don't know, G-Wagon or yeah, it's like uh, kind of heavier. C63. It's like heavy, but kind of floaty at the same time. It's like, I don't know. It's, um, but it has that, that steering feel. Gearbox is, oh, yeah. is really clunky and slow. Um, and it's and, a dual clutch. And it's a dual clutch. It's it's like should, it should be quick. But I don't know. There's, it, it, it's, it's, the uniqueness is really, it stands out on this car. It like it, it's hard to describe how much different this feels than most things. Like I, I guess maybe like a proportion wise, maybe a Viper yeah. would feel kind of similar. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, but it's just yeah. 
Like oh. it's it, like it's it's hard to describe this car. Like it's hard to describe what it's like to drive. Yeah, it's not like a surprising car either. Like when you see it, it kind of feels exactly how you think it's gonna feel. Yeah. Uh, but it just feeling it is like you are not gonna feel it in any other car. So it's weird to like. No, it's feel different. It. It's unique, and um, for like a production car, it's really cool. Yeah. Like um, you don't get that special aspect in a lot of production cars. Yeah. I don't, know. I don't know how many they made SLSs. I don't think it was a limited production. I think it was just kind of like you could buy them. But I also think back in the day, a lot of people kind of got for two reasons. I think one, a lot of people wanted convertibles, so they bought the convertible. Then also back in the day, this was when like Top Gear was at its most influential. And you had Jeremy Clarkson kind of saying, "Oh, you're too much of a show off if you buy a Gullwing, so everybody buy a Roadster." And I think a lot of people honestly bought a Roadster because of that. So now really? the Roadsters are worth influence. I think that was the times I think when Top Gear had enough influence for something like that. Huh. So that's why there's a lot of Roadsters and the Roadsters aren't worth anywhere near what these are worth yeah. and you you don't see a lot of gullwings driving around no the um like the doors right that that's the main thing about the car yeah. like design wise um and mercedes haven't done these doors on any other car no. other than the 300 sl yeah. um and the 300 slr like the little help thing yeah uh, but that's it so that's pretty special um and it's it's nice how they they uh, they didn't overuse that. Like they they could have put you know Goldwing so doors. Cells and this and that. Yeah, well they could have put the Goldwing doors in the AMG GT. In the AMG GT, and they, they could have sold more like more cars based on that. But they respected the specialness of it, yeah. which is which is kind of cool. They didn't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, no. Overall, it's a it's a, it's a strange car, but it's it's special feeling, but very floaty. Uh, I don't really know what to compare it to other than a Viper, and I bet a Viper feels completely, completely different. different like but, it's... you know, it's weird. Yeah. It's just an odd car, yeah. yeah. It's good, though. Yeah. What else did you like about it? I, I like, like, it's a comfortable car to cruise, especially the, high, the way it carries, I know you haven't been on the highway with this, but the way it carries speed on the highway is absolutely nuts, and, like, it's very comfortable on the highway. Right. Um, it's definitely not a daily driver. I like how, like, even if you drive regularly in comfort mode, you still feel like you're driving something special, and it's, like, more of, like, an occasion. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just kind of like the overall feel. Like, it just feels like a special car, and I like cars that feel special. It's not particularly a good car as a car. Like, on paper, the way, like, a Huracan is a good car, or a GT3 or a GT2 RS or something is a good car, this is not good in that way. Sure. It's good, more of the excitement and specialness, like, part of the car. Yeah. Like, dailying this would be odd to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like putting on You would on scrape the front miles. on something. Yeah, it just, it is, it's comfortable. It's nice to drive in, but I guess when you get used to the car and the proportions, you, you kind of, it, it doesn't seem as weird. But being in the car for, what, 20 minutes, half hour, it feels so much different than any other car that I've driven. Just yeah. the proportions. Yeah. Like, uh, and that usually doesn't affect me. You know what I mean? I've driven some weird cars that have like, you know, no no blind spots or tough visibility, but this feels just particularly different. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's odd. And the other thing I actually noticed with the car, which I think it's really cool that a car like this has, is like this, I don't think they cheap out, like there's no cheap materials in, the, in here, there's not really a lot of plastic, the dash is all leather, the, the roof and everything is all Alcantara, even in the back here. So right. I actually do feel like they actually put more money into materials when they were building this car than they would into like an SL or something like that. Oh, okay. I haven't really, again, I don't have much to compare in the uh, uh, in the range of those models when they were released, so I don't really know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have a ton of knowledge on the car in general, so my opinion is very much weighted on this short drive of it. <laughs> um, and the couple times I've been in some of the other cars, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely unique. I see the appeal, and uh, you know, at the time, I know they're these cars have gone up quite a bit, I think. Yeah, they're, they're about, they, they went down and then now they're significantly up. It's, at the time, what was the MSRP, do you know? I think Canadian, like 212, maybe 215, I okay. think. So, you know what I mean? What's higher than this? You can buy like a Turbo S or something, or? Yeah, it was around that type of thing. You know what I mean? And like, this is a much more unique feeling car than a Turbo S. Yeah. It has, has a lot more of a special aspect to it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I do like that, that it's, uh, it was an option in that price range where it's, you know, not just a normal kind of like sports car that's offered. It, it has its, these weird, unique qualities to it. Um, 
which I don't know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So just before I forget, the one thing that's been kind of annoying me with the car, which is like it's the smallest thing, it's, it's honestly probably just me. Literally, I cannot find like a good seating position more like lumber wise, like lumber support wise for my back. Like I feel like my back, no matter how I set up the seat, my back starts hurting a little bit within like 40 minutes. And you know, I have the carbon buckets on my GT4 and all that. I have no issues with that. It's something about these seats. I also have these sometimes with Porsche comfort seats, but I just, two days I still haven't figured out a good like seating position that my back will be comfortable in. Smallest weirdest thing is probably literally just my back, but yeah, just a random thing. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it for my kind of review on the SLS Gullwing. I think I really found it nice to be in a car that's honestly, as much as like, you know, it's a Mercedes and all that and it's German, but it's, it's not as serious as the Porsches. The Porsches are kind of, you know, made with a lot of precision and made with that. I think this car is more like just a fun car. Like there's no like, it doesn't serve any purpose other than having fun. It's not a track car or anything like that. So it just, it's a car that just, it's got to put a smile on your face and it does that perfectly. So yeah, that's kind of my take on it. I absolutely loved it. I'm going to go drop it off right now, get back in my car. Uh, next, so next video after this is going to be a, most likely a GT2 RS. Um, yeah, we'll do a review on that. That car is absolutely wild. And then we'll do some probably other Porsches, maybe some BMWs. Uh, and then it's going to be pretty much car week. So yeah, stay tuned.